Hey, what's up everyone? Welcome back to another episode of the Venom Vlog. And yes, we're going to continue conversations with comics right now because I'm trying to stay away from some of the movie news because there's a lot of TV spots, a lot of stuff going up, new posters. I'm just sharing those on my community board so you have an option to whether you want to watch it or not, if you want to avoid spoilers or anything like that. I'll try to throw them up on there, try to keep them out of the way because I want to keep the conversations to comics right now because the movie is literally a week away. And this way we can you know, openly discuss the comics without getting into spoilers for the movie. So this is my way of just kind of balancing that out. But after the movie comes out, you know, I'll still make some comic episodes, but we'll probably will talk about some movie things or movie related stuff. But I'll try to keep the spoilers to a minimum or non-existent if I can for as long as I can. So we've talked about that previously that I'm going to do my best because I know it's releasing in different times in different countries. So anything with spoilers, I'll mark the video with spoilers. But chance are these videos for comic books, they'll be safe. So if you ever want to check these out and want to learn more about the comic universe, definitely come to these episodes and give us a like or a downvote, whatever you want to do, and join the conversation down below of what your thoughts are on the books we cover. And since Ravencroft is going to be a setting in the new Venom movie, which was shown in the uh, first trailer and then also the second trailer as well, um, but I'm sure it's out there in the promotional images and stuff like that, uh, we have Ravencroft miniseries that we've been discussing, and I thought it'd be great to break it down into smaller episodes and just focus on each issue because I've been liking the series. As I've been reading it, I'm like, wow, this is pretty top-notch stuff, I, for my opinion, with Frank Thierry, who is, I think, a great writer. Sometimes he's written stuff that I haven't been fully on board with, but when he writes stuff like this, this is definitely his bread and butter and his cup of tea. I think he shines really bright in stories like this. So this Ravencroft miniseries, which picks up after the three one-shots, and again, I'll put the links to that episode down below, and then also the first part of this down below in case you didn't watch it. It was just a few episodes ago, but so you don't have to go look for it. Links are down below to previous episodes, so you can watch those and catch up on where we are with Ravencroft. And here we are with issue two, which we have Frank Thierry writing. Angel and Zweta, who's uh, going to be one of the artists on it. Jose Lewis and Scott Hanna are the other artists. So we do have a couple different artists on this one. Uh, but that's I think that's because this series came out so quickly. And I think even right before the pandemic, I can't remember. But the art is, in it, is really good in this one. Actually, I like Angel's art, but I also like the other two that came in to help out. I think this is a solid looking book overall. Very consistent. I like it. And the book does start off where Kingpin is talking to Reed Richards because he's, you know, now an investor in this whole uh, rebuilding of uh, Ravencroft because now that some of the heroes of the Marvel Universe, they want this to succeed. They don't want this to be a revolving door of, you know, uh, villains just going in and out of this place and then killing guards and all that stuff. They don't want these things to happen anymore. So Reed Richards helped with some of the technology at this facility to make it state of the art so they can actually try to rehabilitate people who are struggling, who are at this facility. And Misty Knight is there under the you know, orders of some mysterious government agency, which will learn who they are towards the end. Um, but Miss, Misty Knight is sent here to kind of be the good person, you know, the hero on, on the staff to kind of keep out, you know, eye out on everything, make sure Kingpin's doing his best job, I guess, not doing anything illegal. But unfortunately, he kind of is, but not really. And you're going to find out more in this issue why. He gets a package at the beginning of this book. This is taking place before or as the, the facility is being rebuilt. And someone sends him a package and it kind of alerts him of like, you know, the, the steps he's going to be taking moving forward and how he gets involved with the rebuilding of Ravencroft and how he staffs up with a bunch of supervillains, as we saw at the end of the last issue. He brought in like Scorpion and Taskmaster and Moonstone and Hobgoblin and obviously he has Norman Osborn there. So he has a staff of pure villains and he's like all right I, I need you to help me with you know uh, an, uh, i guess an annoyance but not really an annoyance it's more of a threat a major threat that is living underneath the uh, you know the the foundation of ravencroft um and so it goes back to some of the one shots because we talked about how there was like dracula was involved at one point and linked to you know this facility and there was like experiments going on uh, there was captain america showed up at one point with bucky before world war ii so all that kind of comes to fruition and all that setup that Frank Thierry did in those one shots is now coming in as well as um, Cletus Cassidy's descendant or the, you know, the person he's a descendant of. We're going to learn more about him uh, towards the end of the series and how he ties in, into all this since he was the first inmate at Ravencroft, uh, technically, like a couple hundred years ago, back when they first built it. So, um, so yeah, so you have uh, Kingpin. He's doing some favors for, you know, some you know, it's shady people. And then he finds out that actually the person running the morgue at the, the Ravencroft facility is, uh, is actually, uh, trying to blackmail Kingpin, which is not a smart move. So Kingpin's like, look, there's something living in the basement. 
we've been feeding it technically, so I have another body for it. Uh, but you know, once you once that guy starts blackmailing him, he's like, you know what? I'm gonna renegotiate our terms. And Kingpin throws that uh, that guy, the coroner guy, into the uh, pit as well. So there's this little chamber down at the bottom of the the facility where the unwanted live. And the unwanted were there even after the destruction of Ravencroft. There was these secret underground tunnels that have been there since way, way before that mostly stayed intact. And that's where these creatures are. I mean, they're not really even creatures. They're former inmates that were all experimented on back in like that they touched on in those early series, you know, those early one shots that we discussed. And so now they want their revenge. They don't want this place to be rebuilt. When it got destroyed, they were like, great, we're just going to stay down here and exist until we die. We're not going to bother anybody. But now that this place has been rebuilt, they've been psychically tapping into the kingpin and forcing him to, uh, to you know, confront them. He's like, he's like, hey, don't threaten me. And they're like, or what? And they're like, he's like, yeah, big words because you're all behind this door, you know. And they're like, oh, okay, we'll just open the door. And they go into his brain and make him open the door. And they're like, see, we can control you. And if you continue the rebuilding of this place, we're going to kill you. So obviously he has plans for this place, so he, he kept rebuilding it. So now that's why he's staffed up with all these villains, because he is like, hey, I might be too weak to stop these creatures in the basement. I need to be ready in case they plan an attack. Um, and that's why John Jameson is there. He's like, hey, he's a good guy, but he turns into a werewolf. I could use a werewolf, you know, like I could use as much power at this place as I can. Misty Knight wants to work here? Fine, whatever. Reed Richards wants to put state-of-the-art tech in here? Fine, whatever. I need to make sure that we can handle these threats so this place can go back to just being a building of, you know, the criminally insane so that way I can have a foothold on that and use it for my purposes, whatever those are. So, uh, so I like that they're kind of peeling back that layer. And like I said, in the last issue, you had Grizzly and Misty Knight's there to kind of be a counselor. And Grizzly is, you know, kind of converting to want to be a better person. And some of the inmates, they don't like that. They're like, no, we're all monsters in here and we want to be monsters and we should be proud of who we are. And you want to turn your back on that. And he's like, yeah, but I'm, people are making YouTube videos and filming me on their phone, getting my butt handed to me by like, you know, lame superheroes even. He's like, I'm tired of being laughed at. And he goes, it's a, it's a hard life to just be laughed at on, online and the internet. And he goes, and I don't want it anymore. He's like, so I'm going to, I'm, I'm willing to try something new. And so they don't like that. And they start beating him up and they're ready to, sh you know, shiv him and kill him. Uh, but meanwhile, while that's happening, uh, like I said, there's all these other mysteries going on in, in the building. You have the unwanted downstairs who are manipulating the kingpin, but now he's ready to fight back or at least be ready if the unwanted get out of their cell and come up and decide to attack and, you know, dig their way out of the, the bowels of the Ravencroft facility and work their way into the building. He's trying to prepare himself for that. You have Misty Knight uh, keeping an eye on John and trying her best with him and also the inmates that she's like counseling. Obviously, we had Grizzly get wounded pretty badly in his uh, battle with Hyde and some of the others who try to jump him and, and kill him. Uh, he's alive, you know, but he is wounded. And then you have some guards that are like peeking around at cell 616, which we talked about in the last episode, which is a reference to the Marvel Universe, obviously, uh, because the Marvel Universe exists on Earth 616. So that was kind of neat that they put that in there. But it was funny because I know Frank Thierry. I know the characters he loves. I know the characters he loves writing. And so I was wondering, I was like, is 616, who's in that cell? Like, I really want to know who's in that cell. In this issue, we don't find out. We're going to find out in the next one, so I won't spoil it here. For those who haven't read it, uh, we'll get into it in the next episode, though. So, Or the next uh, time we talk about Ravencroft. So when we discuss issue three, be prepared. We're going to get into spoilers, so go read it yourself. You have some time before that episode goes up. Go read it if you can, and then come back here and let me know your thoughts in the next episode when we reveal who's in cell 616, because the person who is in there, they talk one of the guards into getting closer, and they grab the guard and grab his keys, and they're able to, uh, you know, looks like they're going to escape. So that's where that ends, but then we get a big twist at the end of this issue because they get an alarm goes off, and we're thinking as I'm reading it, I'm like, oh, that must be because cellmates or whatever 616 got out, but no. It's because someone is at the front gate banging on it, asking to be let in. And when they go find out who it is, Norman Osborn, John Jameson, and Kingpin, they go outside to see who's at the front gates of Ravencroft. And they find someone who shouldn't be there, actually. Someone who died recently in the comics, who is Dr. Ashley Kafka. And she's being seen at the, at the gate there. And Dr. Ashley Kafka, she appeared for the first time in Spectacular Spider-Man 178, which is also the first appearance of Ravencroft, the establishment. So uh, so pretty neat that they brought her back 
But how? Because she, in the Superior Spider-Man comic in issue four, she got her eye cut out by a villain named Massacre who needed her eye to open a, a retinal scan on a door to, you know, to cause more, you know, chaos and stuff and uh, to kill more people. And she bled to death when you know, her eye got cut out. But here she is with both eyes standing at the gate waiting to be let in uh, and and facing her former lover, which is John Jameson, because they had a thing at one point. So pretty neat. Great way to end the second issue. Definitely, again, building that mystery. And then also us wondering who's in cell 616, but also wondering who is this? Like, how could it be? How could it possibly be Dr. Ashley Kafka? Uh, I'm, I'm, you know, it's kind of stunning. So it's, it's pretty cool. Great way to end this issue. So we'll get more into who this is what's going on in the cell 616 and what's going on with the unwanted and when their attack you know happens we're going to get into all that in the next episode where we talk about ravencroft but in the very next episode i'm going to try to talk about something else cover something else and i'm going to try to break up these ravencroft episodes with something in between each one if i can you know if there's enough material to talk about but uh but for now that's the end of this episode so what did you think of issue two of Ravencroft. I really do like the series. I think Frank Thierry is very much at home here, doing a great job building off the lore that he helped set up in previous books and that other writers have set up, but also bringing in these mysterious moments and these twists in it, like with the return of Ashley Kafka. I'm very excited to get into that in the next episode. So if you have any thoughts on issue two here, let me know what those are down below. And as always, we'll continue the conversation down there. Thanks so much for watching the show. As always, like, share, subscribe, all that fun stuff, and I'll see you in future videos. Peace.